Hi YouTube family, my name is Alicia English and welcome back to our channel. Today we are back working on our pantry renovation. As you know, we built our own DIY kitchen and we are now doing our own walk-in laundry room slash pantry, sort of slash utility room. We've been able to incorporate a couple different things that we need to function in this house and we're making it all work in this space, which was the original kitchen to this house. There wasn't a kitchen, of course, you know, when we moved in. So we had a huge accomplishment this week. We were able to get our fridge. So today I wanna to start by doing the DIY on the handle to make this fridge tie in with everything else that we have going on. So I've already given this fridge a really good cleaning. Since we purchased it secondhand, I wanted to make sure that even though they cleaned it, that we were able to give it a really good extra scrub. This fridge is in immaculate condition. So although it's older, it saved us a lot in our budget right now, and it works perfectly for the depth that we need for this space. We needed something that was only what they consider counter depth, and I think it was gonna be just about $2,800 plus tax, and then maybe a six or $700 delivery fee to bring one here. So around the close to $4,000 mark for our fridge, didn't wanna spend that. So we were able to pick this one up for $200, but I really don't love that it has the black handle. I'm gonna tape them all off and make sure that we don't get any of the spray we're gonna use on this nice clean white fridge. Kind of lucky, the handle actually is quite textured and so I don't need to do anything to prep it other than to make sure that it's super clean. This is a good a day as any To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin We finally found the right auger bit that we need to put the sink faucets in. I hate doing this part. Because <laughs> if you screw this part up, I'm cutting a new countertop in. And it wasn't the easiest to get the counter shape cut for this sink because it wasn't perfect just because it was made from a mold. It is so nerve wracking. Doesn't matter how many times we do this. <laughs> Does it fit? <laughs> we went with the same gooseneck faucet style that we have in the kitchen. It's a different faucet, same color of the, the actual gold brass that we're using. We wanted something that would look similar but wouldn't be exactly the same. All right, moment of truth. Does it fit? <laughs> After holding our breath, drilling. Oh, perfectly. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, I want to do the other ones before I put them in. Okay. And then I can do them all at once. And then we can connect everything all at once. Yeah. So the plumbing for our washer and dryer, everything goes, or I guess plumbing just for the washer, goes underneath this little tiny sink here, and then it connects and goes down into our basement. And then the dryer vents outside. I can suck all that up with the vacuum. Or you can just blow it all under the counter. <laughs> I can suck it out from underneath. <laughs> Did you eat that? <laughs> I can see all the dust around you. So in the kitchen we have the older style looking faucet that has the turning spot that says like H for hot and C for cold with the white enamel little cap on it. 
I couldn't find that same thing for these, but I did find the turning handles. So I was still able to find these really cute turning knobs and there is actually a C on the top of it when all the dust is gone. But I couldn't find ones that had the white enamel top that said H and C, but that's okay. I'm pretty happy with these. This is just a utility sink, so having these antique brass really nice faucets anyways is already a luxury, and so that really doesn't need to be there anyways. That looks really good. I mean, with all the like I mean, scenario. Scenario. <laughs> oh, babe, don't worry. I got don't. lots down here to get. <laughs> this love has never been stronger. I'm up in the clouds when you're. Before I get going on any more of the renovation here in the pantry room, I want to show you what the boys and I were working on over the past couple of days. We have just 12 more days until our Christmas market. We've been making our inventory like crazy and spending so much time together getting everything prepared. We spent the weekend, we had a four day home day weekend with the boys because we had a Canadian holiday here. And that meant that it gave us an opportunity to work on some of the things we wanted to make for our setup to display some of the things that we're taking. And one of the things that we've been making is Christmas ornaments. You saw last year that I had a selection of hand painted, hand scroll saw cut out ornaments. And we really wanted to have a unique way to be able to display them this year. So I'm just outside right now looking for a branch that or something that we can use to create a 3D Christmas tree ornament hanger that Chase saw online. He's been envisioning it for the past couple of weeks and I absolutely have to make this possible. So we're outside trying to find the perfect branch. But as you know, from watching us try to build our wood shelter, it's been raining for three or four days. And so there isn't the best solutions on the property right now that can be dry in time. So we found this branch here and I'm thinking if we could cut a section of this like bent part off, we could have a pretty straight section here in the middle to create maybe a two and a half foot height, po two and a half inch pipe, blah, blah, blah. A two and a half inch height post that can be the center sort of trunk, I guess, of the tree. And then we can use the dowels off of it. So we have that option. Or Philip found this already dry broom that we can use to be able to cut this and not have to worry about the wood not being dry. He found this in the garage and it's seen better days. I think it was $4 and something. Which do you think is better? <laughs> Right now I'm working on our 3D Christmas tree to be able to hold the ornaments. And what I've done is used that broom to be able to do the post in the middle here as our tree trunk. And I'm using different sizes of dowels to be able to create the look that Chase was wanting for a Christmas tree. And right now we're adding all of our really thin ones, which are actually going to hold the ornaments. So the little ones here, we still have a little bit of sanding to do, as you can see on the end and some stickers from the dowel, but we're working our way through. You can see I have my next little pile of dowels here for the edges already and the drill and the glue. And we're just going to finish this up so that we have a nice spot to put some of our ornaments. So this is our scrap wood broom handle dowel Christmas tree. You can see we used a couple of scraps from the shaker cabinets for the base of the tree, a wooden broom handle for the middle, and then a few various scrap pieces of dowel I had left over from other projects. We also worked on a custom DIY, very Canadiana style uh, tablecloth that we could do. And what we're doing is making everything for our setup out of you know, recycled and upcycled materials. It didn't make sense for us to go buy a bunch of materials to create our setup when everything that we're making for the market is made out of scraps, recycled items, items from nature. From being at our craft market last year, we know that our table is going to be approximately eight feet long and I'm guessing no deeper than 30 inches, although I didn't perfectly measure. 
So what we've done is use this painter's drop cloth and cut it so we have approximately two feet all the way around the perimeter for overhang. And we love the Hudson Bay Co. look. It's so Canadiana and it fits the vibe of everything we're taking to the market. So we've decided to do the stripes along the front of our table here. And then we're going to create a little sign that's going to hang along the front. So the boys are just sponge painting this craft paint on. We had ran out of painter's tape, so we were just using packing tape and hope that it was going to work. But we got a really nice clean line. We're going to remove the blue here and next we need to do our red and our green stripe. I have it kind of folded up right now because this table that I have it propped on is not as long as our table will be at the market. We use some painter's tape as some leftover craft paint and a painter's drop sheet to be able to create a Hudson Bay Co inspired tablecloth. While working on the pantry renovation I was hanging a few of the items we had made for the craft show so I could see how they looked hanging up. I realized that they looked really cute on these pegs that I used to create a shelf for in that space. So I'm going to do the same idea by making a stand-up board that we can display eight different styles of our ornaments. So I'm going to add the wood glue in these holes that I've drilled, and then I'll be able to make a peg shelf to be able to display our work. This is the shelf that was on the wall here where I had some things hanging. And so what we did was we created a flat background, framed it up, and then put some dowels here. So I've made sure to leave enough space between the top dowels and the bottom for ornaments to hang. So I still need to put the base on this so that it can stand up on its own and paint this white. We're going to leave the tree with the wooden pattern here, and then we're already completed our tablecloth. Well, yet another beautiful day at the English homestead. And I have the daunting task of putting all this wood into our new shelter. Like, I mean, it's not going to take that long, is it? Where do I even begin? I know our YouTube family, you're going to have so many suggestions by the time I'm done this. I'm going to have wished to have read the comment section. You're not doing it right. You're going to be all day. I know I'm going to be all day. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright oh, You and I, we got it There's no fun in it. Zero. Going with the bag method to maybe take some of the load off of my back right now. Fill up some bags, maybe take even more of a load instead of just six, five, seven pieces of wood at a time. Let's try it out. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. I've been pulling wood for about two hours right now, and this is all that I've gotten. It, it doesn't even seem that big of a dent on the pile. Now, I don't know if I'm going fast enough, YouTube family, please help me out. Leave down in the comments the quickest way to get this done. But I think I have a solution. Honey! Honey, I need your help! There's too much wood! Am I really method number three? <laughs> yes, you are my <laughs> method number three. First off, I just need you out here for encouragement. You know, like yeah. a cheerleader. Like Cheerleader? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I have a little more girl power than standing here being your cheerleader. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Teamwork makes the dream work. Thanks, hon. longer arms if I can carry 
more wood. No, you're doing great. Am I, am I doing great, Phil? <laughs> Leaving all my worries, I prepare for something new. Whatever it was that held me back, I'm sure it wasn't true. Holding on too long and unresolved questions hold you down. What could have been a friendly smile has turned into a frown. I'm moving on and on. On and on. I'm moving on and on. On and on. Method number four just arrived. We just heard the school bus. <laughs> Landscape changes around me on and on. I feel I must. Whatever happened to me, all right. Happened what am I, Daddy? My good. <laughs> Day, am I, I loving you up? In so many books now, it's almost <laughs> understood. Four? I'm moving on. Oh, I think he's like way more than four. Sweet as well, my destination. If you're looking to begin, then look no further than within. I'm satisfied with what I've got and still eager for more. The change that you've been looking for will come knock on your door. Oh. 